Good. Us, it's the way to go. Good. Yeah. Gordon Mr Speaker, thank you. A great pleasure to rise and speak uh, in this debate. Can I start by saying that's going to be a very hard act to follow. That wonderful, delightful, entertaining, visionary speech from the Minister Jonathan Coleman. Uh, but I'll do my very best, uh, Marion Street, uh, absolutely all right. But, Mr Speaker, that was an excellent speech. The Minister touched on all of the important points that were important to New Zealanders last year before the election, all of the reasons that New Zealanders uh, turned out in their droves to support a party and a Prime Minister and to say that we want more of that for another three years. Can I say it is great to be back? Uh, and it's enjoyable to be back in this House uh, to join with my colleagues and particularly to join with, with other members of Parliament here from all parties uh, as we look towards the next three years to work hard collectively and separately to make New Zealand a better place. I particularly want to recognise uh, uh, the role that you play, Mr Speaker, and your deputies and assistants to congratulate you on your election and reappointment and to say that we look forward to more time uh, with you in the chair. Can I recognise the new members of Parliament who have come here, and particularly members from the Green Party? I thoroughly enjoyed their maiden speeches yesterday, although not as much perhaps as my colleague on my right. But can I say it is good to see uh, new members coming and talking a bit about why they've come to this House, what brought them here uh, and so on. I want to recognise uh, members of New Zealand First, uh, the new members to the House and their contributions and their maiden statements. Uh, that too was enjoyable. To welcome back the Honourable Winston Peters, uh, who has uh, come back to our House. And also, of course, uh, to welcome back the Honourable John Branks. Uh, they're brothers uh, at times, uh, perhaps in the past, but it is good to see uh, those members back. We may not agree on everything, but it is good to have members of the House who will come here and debate issues honestly. May I wish them well in that. Can I recognise four members of the Labour Party that are new to this Parliament and their maiden statements yesterday? And today we have seven new members of the National Party who will make their statements. Seven four. That would have been a good score, uh, Mr Speaker, some years ago in the Rugby World Cup when the All Blacks were playing uh, Australia or somebody else. But I want to reflect on that for a moment. Uh, here we are, a national government, second term, uh, and in the last three years went through with New Zealand some very difficult times, the global financial crisis, uh, you know, the steepest recession New Zealand had faced in 60 years, great heartache uh, to New Zealand and New Zealanders with the devastation of the earthquakes and the very sad loss of life in Christchurch. Uh, but here we are, uh, Mr Speaker, with seven new uh, members of the National Party caucus making their statements today, and well down to them. And that's a bit about rejuvenation. Three years ago we saw rejuvenation for New Zealand. Uh, when New Zealanders in droves, the largest vote ever cast for any party uh, in, uh, under MMP decided they wanted a change of direction and they wanted a brighter future. And here we are with seven new National Party MPs to make their statements today. Uh, rejuvenation after only one term. On the opposition side and the Labour Party, four new members, actually some very good speeches there. But only four of them, Mr Speaker. What happened to the Labour Party over that last three years where they decided that it was about listening to New Zealanders, rejuvenating, bringing in new blood? Well, I feel very, very sorry for some of their hard-working MPs that actually three years ago made their maiden statements with some of my colleagues and I, some very intelligent MPs who are no longer in this place. So uh, there's some work to do. Can I say uh, that uh, in mentioning... Uh, Mr. Peters, we should actually have a vote in this House about who the real leader of the opposition is. Because I think, based upon what's happened so far over the last two weeks, it's not clear that the party in the opposition with the largest number of votes would necessarily win there, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and if we think about. <laughs> Mr. <Mo> <laughs> Mr. Williamson would vote for the Australian. Very good. Very good. But can I say here, Mr. Speaker, that over the last two weeks, uh, when we think about question time, when we think about the opposition holding the government to account, that the largest party, the Labour Party in this House, has been woefully neglectful uh, and absent. And can I say that whilst we won't always agree with everything that happens from all parties in this House, if nothing more, it has been interesting and entertaining to listen to the Honourable Winston Peters. And uh, I say to his colleagues uh, that they too have a very important role to play. You see, the thing about opposition is it's not always about opposing everything. 
It's about finding ways uh, that we can work together, putting the politics aside from time to time and finding ways that we can work together. And can I say that in the Bay of Plenty, in the Bay of Plenty, where New Zealand First members have a list MP uh, based there, and I had a chance to talk to him for the first time uh, uh, last week uh, and welcome him to Parliament uh, on behalf of parts of the Bay of Plenty, and with my National Party colleagues in all the other seats in the Bay of Plenty, which not only did we hold before, we able, were able to, to uh, continue to hold in this election, but it's about putting aside some of our individual political issues and finding ways to walk to better, together more closely so we can do better for New Zealanders, and I look forward to being able to do that with them. So finally, Mr Speaker, I want to get onto a bit of the detail of some of the things the Government has set out to do, but before I do... I want to focus on one thing, and that's the leader of the Labour Party, David Shearer. I had an opportunity, he came into Parliament at the same time as some of us, a short three years ago, three years and a few months. I really have only got to know him uh, uh, when we played in the parliamentary cricket game uh, in, um, in Cambridge a couple of years ago. Strikes me that's about the same amount of knowledge most New Zealanders have on him, but do I wish him well? Absolutely. It seems that he's been demoted or dropped from the big day out last week. Didn't see a lot of coverage there. Breakfast TV, the headlines today, Breakfast TV have decided that as leader of the Labour Party uh, and leader of the opposition, he's not that interesting, so they might not be able to give him a slot every week on Breakfast TV. A prediction for you, Mr Speaker. It is a bit of a shame because I saw him on TV this morning. I felt when he was speaking to New Zealanders, my majority in the Rotary electorate going up. So I would like to keep him there. A plea to Breakfast TV, TVNZ, uh, give him some more time for the good of our majorities. But here's a prediction for the next three years, Mr Speaker. In the next three years, when we have shown New Zealanders that we've continued to work hard for them, deliver on the commitments and promises we made to them during this last election campaign when they re-elected us to govern this country, I guarantee that when we get there, uh, and it's time to compare John Key in, as Prime Minister and his commitments to New Zealand and the New Zealand and New Zealanders and the very hard work that he and this government has done on their behalves, that it won't be David Scherer on the other side that he's up against. There's my prediction. David Scherer, gone from the big day out, dumped from breakfast TV, and I don't think it'll be very long before he's finding another seat on that side a, a row or two back. I wish him the very best because he was quite a good cricket player a year or so ago in Cambridge, but that's about all I remember of him. It's about all that the people of Cambridge probably know about him as well. Uh, where's Winston Peters when we need a real leader of the opposition? Mr Speaker, what I want to say is this three years is about economic development for New Zealand, something that was woefully lacking over the nine years of the last Labour government. Uh, that we started under very difficult circumstances in the last three years, delivered on every promise and every commitment we made as, New Ze as, as a, a party to New Zealanders, and now that we must focus on. In roading, we must do more work. A great start, $12 billion invested over 10 years in the Bay of Plenty, a brand new road that will go from the uh, Tipoki area, the Tipoki bypass, I call it, between Rotorua uh, and, T and uh, Tauranga to the port. It will cut out about 24, 25 minutes return journey. Now, great if you want to go and visit the beautiful part of the Bay of Plenty and the coastline or Tauranga and so on, but importantly for our economy in that area of New Zealand where we produce a lot of trees, a lot of goods that go to the port, that will cut down the time it takes us to get our goods to the port. We therefore will be more productive. When we're more productive, we can be more competitive and that will be more money back into the Bay of Plenty. Uh, national roads of, uh, na uh, roads of national significance are also an important part of that. Mr Speaker, broadband and communications. Wonderful. Last year, before the election, they started digging trenches in Rotorua and in 33 other towns and cities around New Zealand for ultra-fast broadband. New Zealanders can't wait for this to happen and be delivered because for far too long, Mr Speaker, we were left with inadequate uh, ways to communicate with the world and with each other. Rural broadband as well, $300 million the government will be investing into this. Uh, I was told by some of my constituents in a rural area where their cell phones have never worked under the nine years of the last previous uh, Labour government that a new tower is going up and their cell phones will work, but they will get internet coverage faster now than actually posting a letter. And that's what it was like before under the Labour government of rural areas, quicker to post a letter and get a response sometime. Very important to 
reform our economy, give us some of the advantages that we need so that we can grow. Uh, taking away red tape and bureaucracy, uh, the Resource Management Act, we completed some significant reform there, uh, previously a lot more to do, to free up New Zealanders to get on with their lives and business, at the same time continuing to, impre uh, to uh, protect uh, our uh, our uh, wonderful environment. Mr Speaker, time's almost up. Can I say yes. to those who have come... Oh, I'll, have, I'll take a little bit more if you want to. No, but can I say to those that have come to listen to major statements, you're very welcome here. This is your house. It's great to see some friends to come and support our new MPs. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, as with all colleagues on this side of the house, I look forward to the next three years of a John Key-led national government delivering for New Zealanders, working hard for New Zealanders. Uh, it's going to be an exciting three years as we work towards a brighter future. Kia ora, thank you. Honourable Nick Smith. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I begin this address